Hey guys, it is Carl Brown for GuitarLessons365.com. One of my favorite riffs of the 80s, the whole song actually, uh, we're, we're going to do this one today. It's going to be Lay It Down by Rat. Uh, got some recent requests for it, and I just, it's one of those songs that I thought I'd have always done, but I, I just, I guess I didn't. It's, it's just a, such a great song. I don't know why I haven't uh, gotten to it yet. So we're going to take care of that today. We're going to do the whole thing. Uh, both, both good parts for uh, Robin Crosby and Warren Martini. We're going to do both guitar parts throughout the song and, of course, Warren's solo as well. So before I get into it, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and ring that notification bell, of course, so you'll know uh, I release a new video and hopefully, and you know, you can like and comment on the videos. It kind of helps me out here. Um, and some, if you really want to help me out, what I do here on YouTube at least, uh, you'll see uh, a link in the description to my Guitar Academy. That's the GL365 Academy. It contains all of my guitar courses covering many stuff from complete beginner stuff to courses in technique and improvisation, ear training, theory, guitar tone, everything there. So it's not only to get access to all my courses and personal support from me, uh, but you'll also really kind of support everything I do here on YouTube because I wouldn't be able to do these YouTube lessons if I didn't have that academy. So you get a free seven day trial just by clicking that link below and uh, um, so you can try it out and see if it's something that would work for you. All right, let's get to it. So we're in drop D here. So take your low E string. <laughs> Drop it down a whole step to D. And then we have this uh, main riff, which kind of starts the song, which is pretty much the chorus of the song. Um, little variations a little bit on it in the, in the intro. The main thing about this riff is it requires like a really large stretch. So we're going to be doing some... So fair warning, you need a pretty good reach to be able to do this, which you're going to get that by putting the thumb in the back of the neck, and that's going to allow you to kind of lower the thumb a little bit and bring those fingers so they're going more straight up instead of angled, more straight up, and that allows you to do those re uh, stretches. It gets even worse uh, for Robin Crosby's uh, rhythm part during the solo where we take that same riff, move it down two frets. <laughs> So that's a that's a big stretch. So fair warning, just putting that out there. You might have a couple of ligaments pop out of the back of your hand. It's not my fault. I warned you. Uh, but you know we suffer for our art, don't we? All right. So let's get to this uh, main riff here. <laughs> So we're going to start here uh, with this low, low. I'm going to call it the low. Well, well maybe I'll, I'll be smart enough to call this the low D string. Probably not. I'll probably call it the low E the whole time. And then we had the fifth fret on the A, D, and seventh on the D, and the seventh on the G. So when you first hit the chord, you're going to hear it like that. Just as, that's just a D power chord. And then you come back down and hit a couple hits on the low D string. And then we're going to make it a, a sus four chord real quick by adding now the eighth fret there on the B string. You pick that chord and then pull off to the seventh fret on the B string, which now makes it a full D major chord. So we have first what is that D power chord. Then, then back to a couple of hits on um, the low D string. And then... And then what we do, you're basically hitting the two middle strings, so you get the seventh fret on the D, but you're gonna and you're gonna be barring that seventh fret across the D and the G, but you're gonna reach up and grab the ninth fret on the G. So another stretch. And you're gonna pick that, pull off to the seventh on the G. So we have this. Then go back after you do that pull off couple more hits on the low D and then go back to the chord now just with the ninth fret there on the D. You have the fifth fret on the A, seventh on the D, and then ninth on the D. You got those together and now move these two notes. You keep the, the, the D there here on the, the fifth fret of the A string. You move this up to the eighth fret on the D string and then the tenth fret on the 
uh, the G. So we have this so far. So now a couple more hits on the low D, and then back in that chord, and then you hit this fifth fret on the uh, that you're holding on the A string, and you're gonna slide up to the seven while sliding the rest of the shape with it. And then when you get there, so when you get there, you just take the same chip up two frets, the seventh on the A, tenth on the D, twelfth on the G. So we had this. And then we're gonna play the low uh, D string again. Come back and play a C power chord at the third fret. So, so we have a, And then low E, D hit again, and then start the riff back over with that D power chord. So we have this all together. B. Now, for the intro here, now later on the the uh, chorus, you're going to later chorus sections in the actual song. This is just still the intro we're covering right now. Um, we'll just repeat that riff again and again. But here, after, so the second time when you're doing the second repeat, so the first time's normal. Right here. As soon as you hit that chord right there where you stretched up, we do this. So that's just hitting the low three strings, the bass strings there, uh, just all three open, and then hammer on the second fret, then hit it a couple times, then hit it, slide it to three, hit it a couple times, and then slide it to five. And hit it there, and then start the riff over, so we have this. Now here, so today's going to be playing the riff going through it the fourth time here. As soon as you get to that chord, you don't go up and do this big stretch here. It's just a little transition because you get to the verse. So it's just... This C triad, just that you can hold the, um, you can just hold it as a C major chord if you want, like we did earlier, and then just do that little, or you can just do these, I think they're really just doing these top three strings of the chord, so five on the D, G, and the B, and then play six, pull up to five on the B, and the G string and the D, to a D power chord. So that's just the open D, open A, open D, open low D there. And then the second fight on the G, third fight on the B. So that's the intro. And then we are going to, I kind of just, they used more of a kind of a laid back tone. So you can just kind of roll off the volume a little bit. Texas third pre-chorus. So now, first of all, underneath this, we got Robin Crosby doing this. For the whole verse. So we're just, that's just a low D string. One, two, three, one, two. Repeat. Kind of palm muted. Doing that with the bassist. Okay, so we've got that going on underneath Warren D. Martini's part, which does this. So that's kind of start with that D power chord. Then you play the seventh fret on the D and the G to the fifth fret on the D and the G. And then back, five, seven. So we have this.
All right, from there we go over to the fifth fret on the uh, D and the I'm sorry, the G and the B. So you're doing that double stop, and then you play fifth fret on the G, sixth fret on the B, and then back to those two fives from, from the G and the B. So we have this. Um, so you see that in between those, I'm kind of doing some little muted hits. Kind of put pull down off. Now in this last one, roll up the volume, and then we have two parts here for this pre-chorus. So Robin Crosby's part is a little bit uh, kind of just kind of more holding down the low end. So it looks like this. Here's Robin Crosby's part for the pre-chorus. <laughs> It's kind of hard not to play that riff. A riff is just a killer. All right, so we are playing these uh, power chords down here. So it's the second fret across the the low D, the A, and the regular D. So two, three, then three, five, five. So that D power chord with the kind of low D in the bass, and then he quickly goes to the C power chord, and then back to the D power chord. Let's play this. Uh, here we're just gonna stop when we get to the A. A, A. And that leads us into the chorus there. All right, so that's a little bit more basic part here, but then Warren Martini's part over that, um, a little bit more involved, looks like this. Once again, I can't quit playing that riff. All right, so we have, um, we, we're gonna start with this the same chords before it. Two, three. Then we're gonna jump up here and grab uh, this higher version of the G power chord. So it's the, um, the uh, fifth fret there on the D string, seventh on the G, eighth on the B. Play that again, and then go to, gonna play the fifth fret there on the D, fifth on the G, sixth on the B, and then resolve it to just a C major triad. Right there. Across the uh, B, uh, fifth fret across the B, G, and the D. So. Then we get to that D power chord again, and there's a little fill there which does, which does this. So that little fill, uh, you can just, that's the seventh fret on the D and the G. Pull off to the fifth fret on the D and the G. Over to seventh fret on the A, back to the fifth fret on the D and the G, and back to the seventh. So we have this. Then you do another fill here, which is a little bit different. Which is starting with that same the double stops, pulling off from the seventh to the fifth fret on the D and the G. Over to seven on the A again. But then when we get back to these fives, we're gonna play the fifth fret on the D and the G. Pull off the open D and the G. And then to the seventh. So we have this all together for those two parts. So 
his part again for uh, Warren Martinis for the pre-course. <laughs> And then right at that chord, the second time through, is it goes straight to the chorus. So this time we're just repeating that main riff. So depending on the the when you're listening to the chorus, what part of the song, you might re repeat it more, like in the outro, it's obviously repeated more. But then that's just that basic riff without doing the... It just goes back to the uh, verse by just resolving to the regular D chord that starts the uh, verse. So then we have the verse, pre-chorus, and chorus sections again. Nothing is this, those different. So it's just the exact same way we play the same verse this uh, for both guitarists and the pre-chorus and that chorus is just just that riff repeated all right so now here we get to the bridge section uh which i'll, I'll change out the setting here so the bridge section is a little bit weird so we're going to start with um it goes right out of that like a cleat setting. All right, so it's kind of just kind of a, a, a subdued thing. So we're we're starting here with just this little. B flat triad across the third fret of the B and the G, uh, D and uh, G strings. And then you hear just the same strings but open real quick. And then we go up to the fifth fret. The same chord, that C major chord we did earlier. A couple stabs on it and then you're back at it. And then when you play it again, you do a quick little trill between five and six. Or you kind of just hammer five to six on the B. Then down to that B flat again, and then back to that C. So it kind of rotates between those two just a little bit. So that part right there is kind of just the timing of how that is just really just based on that B flat and C mostly. Kind of a thing. Um, so it's, you know, just listen to the, the tune though, you'll know what kind of where to place them. It's pretty quick, but uh, it's, it's a, how it's laid out, it's a, a bit odd just the timing of the chords but so just knowing them kind of orally you know know what's going on is going to help you there and then we're going to end that section the first section leading us into the solo which is with this so that right there is just just a few hits on the fifth fret there the the bass strings across the d a and the low d string and then that takes us to the solo so before I look at Warren Martini solo, we're going to take a look at that hand cracking riff that Robin Crosby is playing underneath it, which is basically the same riff that we've already done, this main riff, but two frets lower, which makes the stretches even bigger. Um, so it's quite the workout, but your hand will feel nice and loose after it. So let me play through it real quick for you, and um, then we'll, we'll check it out. <laughs> Back to the chorus there. All right, so just when it's he's doing the C version of it, that's when we're the Warren Demar Warren Demartini solo is going. So it's the same thing that we did earlier here, but two frets lower. And the only other difference is too that you're not going to be hitting the, the six string that was those kind of two hits, those little bass note hits. Um, you're gonna, those are all going to just now be on the, the third fret of the um, A string. So you just. Do Nothing, 
nothing on the six string is involved there. So just the same riff though other than that. Remember down is B flat, and start over. So it's the same riff, but two frets lower. So you basically report, repeat it, you repeat it four times, but the fourth time is a little bit different. So this fourth time looks like this. It just absolutely transitions perfectly back to the chorus. So it's just really cool how they set it up um, with just staying on that chord and just building that tension. So that last thing that I was doing there, so this would be the fourth time playing through the C version of this riff um, in the solo. So the riff's the same there, and then when you get to the stretch chord, now you just go. So it's just that kind of rhythm. Yeah. All right, so um, anyway, so that's what's going on for the solo rhythm. Now, let's check out Warren Martini's solo real quick. Uh, always awesome when he, when he uh, lays the solo, lays it down. So we're gonna I'll play through it for you real quick and I'll show you how to play it uh, phrase by phrase. So here we go. <laughs> All right, so in, that's the main solo, and then the chorus comes back in, and there's some fills going on like that, but they're kind of really low in the mix, so I'm not going to really hit those. It's more just the the big riff at the end that we'll, we'll continue playing, but this main solo I'm going to cover here. So we're going to start here with this. <laughs> So he's got a very fluid style and a really cool way of playing notes that you might have thought that those were played a little bit differently than that. Um, if you've played this before, how those notes are laid out, but that's how he actually does it. And it's really kind of cool. It gives it kind of this sort of slippery feel to it. So we're gonna start with this. The uh, fifth fret there on the G, kind of slide into it. Some vibrato. And then play the third fret on the uh, B string. Bend that up a half, up a half step. And then another bend, a half step bend at the fifth fret on the B. And then resolve that back down to the normal without the bend. So we have to get this. And then it sounds like, real quick, there's a quick little hit on the fifth fret of the G string, maybe a pinch harmonic on it, and then over to the fifth fret of the D. But that note in the middle you hear very slight. And then we have this. That right there is an open D string, then the Eighth fret there on the um, on the D, um, on the D. Then the seventh fret on the G. Slide it down to the third fret. Swim. All right. Next phrase looks like this. All right, so that's gonna start kind of with just the, the eighth fret there on the high E string. And then you're gonna do a, um, a unison bend. So you keep holding that eighth fret on the high E, but also bend up the, the 11th fret on the B string together. So they sound the same. 
Then he does a little sequence. Through the C minor pentatonic scale. So we're basically doing this. We're gonna... So it's basically, you know, how we have the, the, you kind of line the um, pentatonic scale up in double stops. So it's like we have these, the eight, two eights across the B and the high E. And then the 10th fret on the G, 11th fret on the B. And then the 10th fret on the G and the 10th fret on the B. And then the 10th fret on the D and the G. And the 8th fret on the D and the G. So we have that, those. So what he does is just picking across those. He's taking the, the first two double stops, picking the high string, then down to the lower string, and then he does the same thing throughout. Then the 11th fret on the B, 10th fret on the G, then 8th fret on the um, B to 8th fret on the G, 10th fret on the G, 10th fret on the D. So we have this. And then all the way down to the 8 on the G and the 8 on the D. So we have this. So he really digs into those notes. He's doing all downstrokes there. And then, then do a bend and release at the 10th fret of the G string. And then we have that, which is kind of a typical blues thing. Um, so that's the uh, 11th fret bend on the B string. And then you're going to play 8 on the high E string and then pull off 11 to 8 on the B. And then into a 10th fret bend on the G string. And then go back up to the top note by playing, rolling from the 8th fret of the B to the 8th fret of the high E. So it is. So it is. From there, we go back to a pull off from 11 to 8 on the B. Then over to 11 on the G. Back to 8 on the B. And then go down, uh, we have. 11, 10, 8 on the G. So we have this. So, so far we have this. Right, and then we had this next thing, it's kind of bluesy too. It looks like this. So what he's doing is he's sliding into the 10th fret on the D. And then he plays the 10th fret on the G string a couple times. And then he picks the, that note again. And he does a quick little Slide up to 11, slide back down to 10, pull off to 8. So we have this. And then we go back to the 10th fret on the D, and then roll to 10 on the G, and play 8. So we have this. And then what you're going to do is this. You're going to play 10, slide up to 12 on the G, over to 13 on the D, back to that 12 on the G, and then back to that 13. Sorry. And then we have the end of the solo, which sounds like this. All right, so, uh, so after, after we get to that note here, what we're gonna do is a quick little legato. Like, 
which is 15 on the high E, pull off to 13, pull off to 11, and then the same thing on the B string. And then, all right, so from there, you're gonna do that unison bend at the 11th fret on the high E, and then bending up the 14th fret on the B. So the same thing we did here, but at the 11th. So we have this, and then this last little lick. So that last little thing, a little bit awkward. So we have this. 11th fret on the high E, coming out of that unison bend, we play 11 on the high E, pull off 15 to 11. I'm using these fingerings, these are, these are the fingerings that he uses, he doesn't use his pinky in this lick, so we have this. And then we have 15, pull off to 11 on the high E, so we have this. And then we have, 15, 13 on the high E, and then 15, 11 on the B string again. So we have this all together for that. So that first legato lick is just straight down. Into the some unison bends. And then the second one. So slow. And then back to that unison bend again, the same one couple of them and then just move it down a half step to end the solo. That you just admit. So that last one. That's when that when you get that last one, that's when he kinda you can play that. Outro course. So you see right there that little transition we did in the intro. When you play that full riff and in, in the outro course, you play the full chorus four times, and then in that fourth time through on that chord, you switch that. Just like we did in the intro, and then back. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. It is a fun, fun song to play. We'll really stretch those hands out too. Um, but it's just a great, great song. I don't know why I haven't done it yet, but uh, I took care of that. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you again soon for guitarlessons365.com.